All right, the next section we're going to be looking at is quite a big one. It's called My Money. And in here you have expenses, dividends, salary, and payroll. So we're going to look at expenses today. And just like on the overview page where you saw the expenses box of money owed to you, this is the same exact section, but it's in its most real format. So on the overview page is like a snippet of this section, and this is the main area. So you can see the accountant's fee is in here for 120 pounds, and this is how much is owed back to you. So this has not yet been repaid. You can take 120 pounds from the business account to repay yourself for this cost. So you have a, an add new button up here and you've got an expense and you've got a mileage claim. So if you click on expense, you've got some expense details here and it essentially is the type of payment that it is or refund, for example. So if you returned something, you have the option to refund it on here as well. But for most, most of the time, it's going to be a payment, hopefully. Then you've got the category here. So you want to select the most appropriate category of the expense you have added in. So let's say you have a web hosting cost and the date of that expense was 15th of August. And the value of my web hosting cost is gonna be six pounds. So I'm just gonna put a short description of web hosting. I can even put the company name in here if I want to. So this expense that I'm adding in currently, I have paid with a personal card and that's why I'm adding it into here. If the business has paid for it with the business account, then we don't need to add it into here. It'll be accounted for when we do the banking. So this, I've added my six pound personal card cost of web hosting, and I'm gonna link it to my audiobook for some reason. And you can choose to rebill here. So this will be added into the invoice if you want to rebuild the cost. And those were the options when we were creating the invoice template. So I don't want to rebuild this particular cost. I'm just gonna allocate it to the project and simply just select the right project for that. And you can also select it to recur. So mine does recur monthly, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And I have an attachment section here, which I can use to attach my receipts, which is very handy. And on the mobile app is even more handy because you can take a picture with your phone through the app and you don't have to worry about importing it into your computer or whatever to add it onto free agent so I'm happy with that and I'm gonna create the new expense okay here we go so we've got our web hosting cost linked to our project and it recurs monthly so it's six pounds spent so now my total balance owed to me is 126 pounds for everything and this is just what I've paid for personally and the next thing we're gonna look at is adding a mileage claim. So if you use a personal car, the correct way to account for this is adding a mileage claim. So we're gonna click add new and then select mileage claim. And in here, we've got similar details to the expense reimbursement, but this time we're gonna add miles. So, so for the date, I want to add my weekly mileage traveled here from Monday to Friday, ending Friday. So I'm just gonna date it the 23rd of August and I traveled 150 miles for that week. I'm just gonna call it weekly mileage to client site. Now, ideally you would have a mileage log as well to coincide with this. So an Excel spreadsheet or something like that will work perfectly. You just want a record of where you're traveling to and from, so such as postcodes or even the names of the places. And generally that's what you need as a mileage log. And also make sure you keep your fuel receipts to prove a journey was made. So. The mileage allowance allows you to only account for business travel with your personal car. It does in fact include some wear and tear of your car as well. So the 45p per mile for the first 10,000 miles includes the fuel portion and also the wear and tear of the vehicle. So if you need repairs, if you need to buy bits and pieces like accessories for the car, the mileage allowance is supposed to go towards those things as well. So you don't really get anything else other than the mileage allowance. And what you wanna do here is select the vehicle type. So you also got motorcycle and bicycle mileage, but I'm gonna do car mileage this time. And yes, these two are different rates of mileage. So you don't get 45p per mile for these ones. And reclaim mileage rates. So this, you can have an option of just rebilling the mileage, but not reclaiming it from your business, um, which doesn't really make sense for most people. Just use add approved 
mileage allowance payments. So this is their standard 45p per mile, and then it changes to 25p after 10,000 miles. So you can also reclaim VAT on mileage. So if you're a standard rate VAT registered, and you have a VAT receipt for the miles you traveled, then you wanna take this box here to reclaim that mileage VAT. And it calculates it based on the fuel usage of the car and engine size. So they have approved amounts of VAT that would be taken away from these. So let's say I've got petrol engine of this size, pretty standard. Okay, and then I can also choose to link this to a project if I wanted to, but this time I'm not going to. It's not particularly for that project. So you can have it recur if you want to, but obviously your mileage could change. So it's better if you just add it in every week or whenever you want to. And also the attachment section. So if you have the fuel receipt, you can add it into here. And once you're done, just create a new expense with that. And there you have it. We've added our weekly mileage claim. And you can see here it's calculated that it's £67.50 owed back to us. So now total balance is £193.50. So if I hadn't repaid myself this entire time, I can just take this whole amount here as a transfer to my personal account for these out-of-pocket costs.